But when I tell you that Martel was triggered as hell by Marceau, and as well he should have been. Now, if Martel would have had that level of energy and protection regarding Melody when they were married, when they were a marital union before the dissolution, who knows what could have happened. And if he would have been able to keep his tallywhacker, his peen, his male parts, and his pants on top of that, a whole myriad of things, honey. He would have had to lay on Dr. Francis's couch for a while, too. Hey, this is Sensibility Speaks. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for stopping by, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. All right, y'all, it is about that time. Let's sip some sensibility, shall we? Have you on me, Spoken Marcel? Yeah, man, we had Daryl with him, and uh, Marcel just kind of, you know, he got that mouthpiece, mouthpiece bro. Ooh, chow, Martiana busted down, laugh now, and cry later, bro. Apparently, they did get some sponsorship. That's the sandwich, bro? No, just didn't want to reveal. See, that was Nelly's suggestion. You really got sponsorship after she said you can't get sponsorship? What's going on teacher like, I didn't think about that. It's a lot of things you think about it. It's a whole host goddamn hit your shout to it. I think he felt like he would only pay speakers if they were professional. Of course, Marceau don't want to pay nobody. Child, he will find a way to weasel out of paying our former president, Barack Obama, if he were then going to speak, okay? No, I was just at the VCC last year, and then Melody spoke. Yeah, man. Oh, no. Put some respect back to me, because everything that you've got now, you would not have touched anything. It would not have been us being pissed to you and your family. That's why I don't like Facebook. I just saw Marshall at the town hall, and if I had known that he was talking crazy like this, I would have confronted him then. To me, it don't make sense for Marshall to talk about me or myself up like that, that knowing that he may make it. Don't forget, the taking it from you. You know, on some level, watching the downfall of Martel Hope is kind of sad in a sense, and you can't feel completely sorry for him. You just can't, because he has been a malignant, narcissistic, evil, maniacal somebody, right? We all know the story. We all know all the dastardly shit he's done, right? But to be tricked out of your spot and to remain friends with the individual or individuals who have plotted against you, it's almost like a tragic movie and just watching season after season how the episodes have played out and the dirty shit he's done to his ex-wife and how who he once thought was his friends or friend in particular, stab him in the back like that, but you bought it on yourself, brother, you did. And see, reality is spinning the block like a mother sucker, okay? See, in the beginning, Martel thought he was the puppet master and he used Marceau, he used Letitia, Letitia used her mama, he indirectly used Kimmy and Maurice, he used his little bed bug, as some of y'all call, Miss Ariane Curry, his little bird brain side chick, right? Turned baby mama, he used her. And he even used Destiny with her opportunist cigars. And in a sense, he used Stormy to a degree or tried to use Stormy, but she had her own agenda and her own motives, right? And so as you can see this visual right here, he used all of them, even Carlos King, let me not forget him. He used all of them as his flying monkeys to do his bidding. Now, when I say flying monkey, I ain't saying monkey like, how Erica Mena calls Spice a goddamn blue monkey. I'm talking about the narcissistic term that people use when individuals use people to do their bidding. Narcissists use people to do their bidding, okay? We all know that Martel is narcissistic and just as self-absorbed as he want to be and unaware and deluded, okay? But when I say that karma and reality is really spinning a block, I think he's getting it on some level to a degree, but he bought it on himself, right? So again, let's look at this visual. He tried to super befriend Carlos King to the point to where he became Carlos's favorite. They say Mel was. No, Martel at one point was Carlos's favorite. Maybe he still is because he and Kingdom Reign Production, his team, they protected all the dastardly shit that Martel did and his abusive ways toward Melody. Him allegedly attacking makeup artists and, and damn near becoming violent toward Melody on the screen, right? even to the point to where Carlos King shed a tear for him during one of the reunions because he felt sorry for Martel because I think allegedly during that said reunion, 
he just went off and I think tried to attack Mel's former makeup artist, the guy. I think he was a makeup artist that was there when Melody, way back seasons ago, was filming Behind Every Man, right? And so anyway, Carlos and everyone tried to rebrand Martel and tried to just make him like this decent person when we know deep down he's been a motherfucker, even down to the, the revenge pee that he was plotting to put out against his ex-wife in attempts to smear her, her name. So anyway, he was a flying monkey, right? Because he went on a whole press tour, Carlos King did, with Martel. He just had to make sure that he won't will say no crazy-ish as he's doing his PR tour, Carlos had to accompany him, right? So anyway, we all know he used Carlos as a flying monkey, so to speak, against Melody. That's what narcissists do. They try to tarnish your name and they try to befriend all of your friends in attempts to badmouthing you and talking ish about you, downing you, projecting and deflecting and all of that ish, the shit that they do, and then try to put it on you, the person that they're trying to smear, a whole smearing and bashing campaign, okay? He used Marceau as a flying monkey because we know during certain seasons all the way up until shit, even still this season, to where Tisha and damn Marceau were tag team Melody. Damn near the whole cast was against her a couple seasons ago, coming down on her. It was her against every damn body, right? Trying to smear that damn girl's name and beat her up and trying to isolate her off her own damn show. You know, and even Destiny turning on Melody, talking ish about her, but yet she lending you five and $6,000 to keep your damn lights and ish on. And so you can keep a roof over your head for you and your baby. But you mad that she revealed that to everybody. You damn right she revealed it to everybody. You partnered up with Martell and the Scots. You thought that was the winning team, so to speak, because I guess everyone's recipe for success at that time or so they thought was to come against Melody, okay? Almost like, you know, heavy as a head that wears the crown, the queen's crown, right? So everybody wanted to come up off of her. So if I take down the star of the show, then maybe I too can become a star, whatever. So she was a flying monkey, right? So all of them were flying monkeys, all of these people to come down on her. But it's just ironic to see how the same motherfucker that you helped form Scope Industries, okay, Enterprises, LLC, whatever the hell it is, you convinced Melody to show them the ropes, to show them about property preservation, to show them about the commercial real estate side, you know, or to getting and bidding on contracts and things like that. You showed them your whole recipe your blueprint for success, okay? And all the while, you guys were the pillar of the community and a power couple of the community, whereas Marceau and Letitia Scott secretly hated you, both for different reasons. They each had sinister motives against the former hopes. And as you just heard Martel say, shit, we were running a million dollar damn business while this MF was working at goddamn movie theater, be him managing it, giving out popcorn, but whatever the fuck he was doing. He was working in a movie theater, allegedly having to share down to one card, your family of five, three kids and a wife, they lending you cards and shit. And this is how you repay them? Even though Martel is a mother effer all unto himself, he was a friend to you, Marceau. He was a friend to you and convinced his wife to be a friend to you. And being friends with you guys were their ultimate demise because see, Martel's, going around town on a dick swinging contest, okay, a, a pissing contest, trying to keep up allegedly with you and your brother Maurice, allegedly, okay, is y'all going around. But his ego star ass fell in love with his little bird brain. She's like a goddamn nut. He couldn't get rid of her if he goddamn wanted to, okay? Whereas you guys might have y'all holes or y'all chicks in check or maybe got rid of them or they knew the game or y'all dealt with chicks or women who had some shit to lose, whereas Martel ain't the sharpest of motherfucking knife in the drawer, okay? He got with somebody who had every damn thing to lose, okay? Every damn thing to lose. Willing to risk it all for her man, child. Even to the point she was going to release Revenge Pete for her man, child. But anyway, so all of these damn flying monkeys, right? You were the puppet master. You know, everybody coming against Melody, coming against Melody. And you even said yourself, you won't go on down by yourself. You tried, honey, even to the point of taking her kids. You tried to take that queen down. But for every five or ten demons, five, ten blessings, right? So 
fast forward. Here we are now. You done lost your damn queen, okay? Marceau was playing dirty chess, a, a dirty game of chess with you. Again, they all had sinister motives. He was jealous and envious. He wanted and coveted, and he wanted what you had, okay? I don't think it was necessarily the power couple dynamic per se. Tisha wanted the power couple dynamic. She envied with the aesthetic of what you and Melody had. And I'm talking about Martel and Melody when they were married, you know? Whereas I think Marceau envied the power that you guys, the power dynamic that you had in the community. You know, he wanted to be the big man on campus, so to speak. He wanted to get the money. It's all about a money grab to him. It's all about power and money for him. He won't try to be no equal partner with Tisha. She was along for the ride because that was his wife. He had his own sinister motives, you know? So he preyed upon you guys, okay? He picked you apart. I've done videos on this shit, right? And now Tisha's motive, again, she hated Melody, couldn't stand goddamn Melody because she wanted to be Melody, okay? You can't compete where you can't compare. You would never be Melody. That's why she's so bothered when Melody tried to give advice during the town hall meeting, the after action review. I'm hopeful that by the, by the time you guys have everything ready for the next one, that it's, you know, more organized, it's very much so more put together, more streamlined. Baby, if looks could kill. All that good stuff so I can, you know, participate. So you don't feel like it was organized? And see, that's the thing for Dr. Melody Cherie. Unfortunately, Tisha doesn't want you to participate. That's the whole premise behind everything, okay? Because remember how I always say this is her one shining moment, child. And she's afraid that you're going to eclipse her and she's going to be in your shadow if you participate. Oh, it definitely was. Like, it, it, people paying at the, the day of the event for booze. So we talked about, about that activity thing. That's kind of... Oh, the event, you said, wasn't working. There out. were some parts that weren't. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And certain things not thought out. So I think that by the next time, it will be. You know, better. But if we're here to better, but anything like prior to, I don't think we're here to discuss it. Yes, we're right, definitely here to discuss all of that. Because the prior to leads to the main. Come on, Dr. Melody Cherie, get their asses together. You know she don't want to hear that ish because poor planning leads to poor execution, Tisha. The goal is to flawlessly execute, damn it. Okay. Tisha seems to be very quiet, calm, receptive even, I would say, right? But as long as I had something to say. Dr. Melody Cherie, the mere fact that you exist and breathe vexes Tisha's spirit to no end. Because she's insecure. I have flight to catch. She could take advice, as Melody said, from everybody else and even seeming to welcome the advice. But the moment Melody provides constructive criticism, all the while, goddamn Marceau is um, goddamn taking copious notes, you know, goddamn writing his ass off, taking damn notes. Whereas Tisha might have been secretly recording the conversation. She was fucking with her phone, but I believe she may have been doing a voice memo recording the shit so as not to miss anything, right? But the moment Melody gave damn Tisha some goddamn advice, she didn't want to hear that ish because Melody represents everything Tisha will never be and what she aspired to be. Now, Melody used to be an inspiration to you. She was even aspirational, but your aspiration quickly turned to envy. Now, remember Tisha said she grew up on the wrong side of the tracks or whatever, or that's what Marceau said. Her grandma, whoever raised her, let Wanda tell it, she raised her, but I believe the grandma, whatever raised her. And we all know Tisha's story, but Tisha felt a certain way. She's a beautiful round woman, right? Her melanin is popping, but she don't know that. I guess people may have made fun of her or she felt insecure because she got rich, melanated skin. Child, you should be happy that you, you got sun-kissed skin, the fuck? But anyway, I think Melody triggers her because Melody might not be alabaster or the highest yellow or the lightest, but, you know, she's on a lighter side. I think that triggers Tisha. She's a beautiful, naturally pretty woman. I think that triggered you. But her confidence, her essence, her je ne sais quoi, when she walks into the room, she commands a presence. All of that shit, it's a combination of things that triggers Tisha when it comes to Melody. You were jealous of the fact that even though Marceau is misogynistic, okay, and he has a level of misogynoir, child, and as brusque as he comes off, he too admires Melody's smarts and her intelligence, right, and tried to use and siphon information off of her. 
he wanted to trick the former Holtz out of their spot. And in a sense, he did. He tricked Martell right out of his spot. Shit, to the point now, they putting his motherfucking ass out a damn rental property that Chris Fletcher trying to honor his fiduciary duty. I love when he says that for his client, who I guess is moving in. But to get to the point, honey, Melody rolls out of the ashes after the divorce and um, soared like a damn phoenix. And then for Marcel to try to denigrate and marginalize, child, you know damn well, you tried to learn everything you could from the hoax. Really, Melody, because she was the brains behind the operations. You know it. We know it. Every damn body knows it. And the reason why you come for her is because you want to be the star of the show, so to speak, right? You want all the power. It's about power and money for Marcel. That's all it is, power and money. He knows that Melody represents that. People love Melody, right? In fact, I don't think you want her fan base or to be loved. You just want that power dynamic. If you could, you would jump inside her brain and then try to get all the information you could. And what Tisha would do, honey, if she could wear Melody's skin, goddammit, she would. Child, because she done got a BBL, damn tummy tuck and all that. Not just because she's envious of Melody. She did that more, more or less because she knows that her husband has a tight. She wants to look the part and look like the women that he cheats with. But child, this episode was something else. But that damn Tisha can't take any constructive criticism or any constructive feedback, shall I say, from Melody, you know, but you took her idea when it came to the Blueprint seasons ago. Mommy, dearest goddamn podcast, whatever the hell it is. But for Marceau to say that Melody's business is, oh, I don't know what she does. You know exactly what the fuck she does. Honey, she got property preservation. She got 7th Avenue skincare. She's a co-owner of a network. I can't remember the exact name. Newbie? I think it's Newbie. She has a partnership with Home Decor with another sister. She's doing that. She has Sugar Mama for Little Sugar Mama. I think she has a partnership with Posner, okay? And she has something else. I think little lip glosses or chapsticks for the girls, for the kids. She got a whole bunch of shit. I know I'm leaving some stuff out, but y'all, I know how y'all are. Y'all try that in the comments, and I welcome that and tell me what I may have left off. But anyway, we all know that he was trying to relegate her to goddamn e-commerce you damn right she uses her platform for damn e-commerce dr melody should you damn right she does shit you would too but don't nobody like you marcel you know people don't care for you and teach you that much but child i could go on and on and, and get up on the soapbox but again just to bring this back around full circle it's no fun when the rabbit has a gun it's just a shame again martel was the original puppet master but he ended up being puppeted and tricked out of his spot by Marceau, who's now trying to be the puppet master, except ain't nobody going, okay? Stormy and Courtney, they ain't going. They're not going to allow goddamn Marceau to puppet them. And of course, Big Lou and Tiffany got their own thing going. So the way that he tries to puppet master, in a sense, he wants to ensure that they're not being inclusive. So of course, you don't want to include Nell and Chris Fletcher into the comeback group, Kimmy, okay? Now, and I'm going to get to you in a minute, Kimmy. Of course, you don't want to include them in a, the Black Business Expo Part 2. Because, again, it's all about a money grab for Marceau. And for Tisha, it's her one shiny moment. She, wanted, she wants it to be all about her and her husband in terms of what they did. She wants to be that power dynamic and that power couple. But you'll never be what Melody and Martell was. And the only reason that Martell had any glory is because he was attached to Melody. Point blank fucking period, right? But it's just so funny. Let me circle back to Stormy and Courtney. Chell, isn't it ironic that Tisha let Stormy get away with calling her husband a woman and a bitch, and he acts like one, okay? With a snarky ass. Maurice said he's an asshole. No, he got some bitch tendencies too. Chell, he like to argue with the ladies, talk to the ladies, right? But you ain't got too much to say about her. Now, there is a little scene to where Stormy push your button one too many times, you kind of flicked the ball for her because everybody was on you, in your opinion, when y'all were all sitting for lunch in that booth. And I'll show that in a second. It looked like y'all being real secretive about like the event and like, like the money, pretending to be event. Everybody now to be like, what the f I got going on? Because that's what the business we paid for is the event. Y'all ain't got It's just ironic that Tisha has very minimal or very little to say when it comes to Stormy calling her husband a whole B.I.T., a whole Mitch, okay? 
and a damn woman. But see, Tisha wants to cultivate that friendship because, I mean, let's face it, Stormy may have her issues, but she does have a multi-million dollar business, despite allegedly if she has lawsuits and all that stuff against her too. I mean, she is a prominent business owner and Tisha wants to attach herself to that because part of Tisha, she's a social climber, okay? She will use you. She's opportunistic herself. I've said before, she's a covert narcissist. She's, she throws rocks and she hides her hands, right? And so she definitely wants to stay attached to the likes of a Stormy. So she lets her get away with certain things. And she's inspired by Stormy, but Stormy didn't trigger her aesthetically. It, even though I think Stormy's a nice looking woman too, but Melody, honey, is just the real damn deal. And she just triggered the F out of Tisha, child, just on all fronts, right? But back to the town hall meeting, but when I tell you that Martel was triggered as hell by Marceau, and as well he should have been. Now, if Martel would have had that level of energy and protection regarding Melody when they were married, when they were a marital union before the dissolution, who knows what could have happened. And if he would have been able to keep his tallywhacker, his peen, his male parts, and his pants on top of that, a whole myriad of things, honey. He would have had to lay on Dr. Francis's couch for a while, too. But just saying all that to say, I like that he tried to defend Melody in that moment when that goddamn Marceau, once again, was trying to minimize what she did. And everybody knows that he's a gaslight mother effer, okay? But I think he took it personal, too, because at that time, they were conjoined, Okay. And even though they're divorced, he still sees her as a part of him, unfortunately. You know, Dr. Melody Sheree, it is what it is. But, again, it's just a shame that he didn't have that energy when he should have. And that motherfucker tricked him out of spot. It, you know? <laughs> I think I can end on that note. I mean, what else is there to say? What else is there to say? So, anyway, this is Sensibility Speaks. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And you guys drop down in the comments and you tell me what you think about all of this, about the puppet master, how Marceau is trying to now be Mr. Man, okay? And he's trying to puppeteer everyone else, right? Shit, poor Martel, he ain't even a damn puppet master no more. Child, all his flying monkeys are gone, honey. <laughs> they have run amok, child. They trying to puppeteer other people, they damn selves. All right, I'm out.